The post hole preparation begins with removal of root filling material using EDS color coded Gates glid and reamers. Then, in sequence, a non end cutting EDS Gates glid and reamer is used until 100% of the post hole length and 90% of the post hole width are established. You know you have established the correct length and width when the last Gates glid and used is the same color as the primary reamer of the chosen post. We are using the number two size blue primary reamer from the flexi flange post kit. When drilled to the stop, this will give us the exact post hole length for the full length of the shaft. Next, we now use the countersink drills in sequence, starting off with the yellow countersink drill, always cutting wet. Next, we use the red countersink drill. And finally, the blue countersink drill. The countersink drill makes the seat preparation for the flange and second tier of the flexi flange post all in one operation. The post must always fully seat. You can determine full seating of the post by the flush fit of the flange with the coronal denton. The flange must always be fully seated within its preparation. If not, you reduce the post's ability and retention and you increase the chance of post fracture under function. Trial seat the post to determine fit. Make sure the second tier and flange are fully seated. If the flange does not fu seat fully, then the shaft of the post is too long. Remove the post from the root and cut the shaft from the apical end. In this situation, we are trial seating the post and the flange does not seat all the way. The flange is not flush. Always make sure to try in the post before cutting the apical end. This will cut the threads into the denton in an atraumatic fashion because we have the full length of the split available to collapse the legs. You can see the debris from the threading of the post. It has accumulated in the split of the post. We remove the debris and adjust the post. We cut the apical end if necessary to ensure full seating of the flange. It is important to cut both legs at the same time. It is not necessary to reshape the apical conical tip. Each thread at the apical end is one millimeter apart. You can use this as a gauge whether to cut one, two, three, or even up to four millimeters of the post from the apical end in order to make sure that the flange does seat completely. We now place FlexiFlow Auto E in the canal to cement the post. FlexiFlow Auto E is a self curing, reinforced hybrid composite cement. FlexiFlow has a proven and researched 10 year fluoride release therefore minimizing secondary decay. Excess cement is now suctioned away. We are now acid etching in preparation for a bonding agent for the core material. We recommend any fourth generation bonding agent. The surface area is etched for 15 to 20 seconds and then washed with water. As you can see, the flange is fully seated. Now we place the pre-mixed bonding agent, in this case a self-cured total edge bonding agent. We have placed some opaquer in the bonding agent to opaque out the metallic post color. We are now adding Tycor Auto E, which is a dual cure composite reinforced with titanium and lanthanide metals. It is extruded from an auto mix syringe, which guarantees a consistent mix every time. We are filling the EDS core form with Tycor Auto E. We place it over the post and previously place composite. We now light cure this for approximately 20 to 40 seconds, depending on the thickness and depth of the composite. It will continue to self cure for the next six minutes. Once the core form is removed, we are ready to prepare down the core for the final crown preparation. Because Tycor is reinforced with titanium and lanthanide, the material is exceedingly hard and reduces the likelihood of ditching or grooving during core preparation. The white line between the core and the tooth structure is the bonding material. It is never a problem to expose some of the post head on the occlusal end of the preparation.